Hello and welcome to Who Does Rolls TV. I am your host, Mike B. Here we are. It's December the... I think it's... It's December. <laughs> I don't fucking know anymore. It's a... I think it's on the 14th or so. Um, <coughs> um, yes. So anyway, here we are. Um, the year's nearly over. It's nearly all done. Thank Christ. That's, that's roll on 2021. Um, that can't be that much worse, can it? Uh, so here we are there. It has run through the usual shenanigans, which is going to be light because, what can we say? Played. What have we played? <sighs> Not a lot. Um, Hearthstone has been still seeing a uh, thing that's pretty much all we've been playing is the uh, Battlegrounds on that. We're just grouping up and playing that. It's kind of nice because it's adding to my XP. Kind of cool. Um, enjoyable. If you've not played Hearthstone, I will repeat again, Battlegrounds is a uh, easy buy into it because you don't need to pay anything for it. It gives you all the stuff you need to do. Um, unlike the card game version of Hearthstone. But it's a good it's a good game. Anyway, so there's that. But I've gone on about that in the last couple of weeks. So um, I won't go on anymore. Um, I also um, took the scandalous decision of... I um, uploaded or uh, started up Tabletop Simulator the other day. Um, obviously the TI4 is on there and they've added the Prophecy of Kings expansion to it. So I thought, right, you know what? Let's get my head around this and maybe we can uh, have a game of this maybe one night. And um, I, I, I loaded up, it was all there and I just, I can't, I can't bring myself to do it. It is just, uh, even I know it's scripted and it's the best version of that in it, it's just isn't my fucking board game. It's, it's, it's that interface. It's just like wearing mittens while trying to cuddle a uh, mouse. I just, I can't get on with it. I don't get on with it. I tried and I just couldn't be bloody ass with it. Cause it's just, it's just, there's, it's, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. I mean, I love it maybe, but I just can't bring myself to do it. I, if I'm going to play it, I want to play it on, on the table. So next year, maybe. Um, news has very little news at the moment. Nobody looks around. I mean, we're at the tail end of the year anyway, so there's not really much big releases coming out now. There, obviously, a bunch of stuff kind of released in the last week or so. Aliens and Update in the, in the Core um, is doing very well from GF9. Pretty much sold out on every site. I did pre order it, um, so hopefully, my copy will be showing up soon. Uh, I'll do an unboxing when that arrives, and hopefully, I'll, I can play that maybe solo. So we'll see holding up hope that it is comparable to Leading Edge's Aliens game, and I'll go into all that maybe with the unboxing review. But yeah, one hopes. Um, I know there's been a bone of content and discontent on it because the minis become um, on sprues. You've got to build them um, with glue, and that has caused a great disturbance in the um, game boarding force. Um, people are like, why should I do this for my board game? No, I'm not buying it. Um, I don't know where you come down on that. Uh, I don't mind assembling minis. I quite find it quite therapeutic along with painting them um, when I get the chance, though I just think of the Imperial Sword backlog that I have to get through. Um, but yes, uh, I love Leading Edge's game. I'm hoping this is, is captures some of that. Um, it looks fun. Um, I'm glad I pre-ordered because it's now sold out. We shall see. Um, I did the other day, which I shall to an unboxing of this turned up from Portal Games actually unexpectedly which is the Robinson Crusoe treasure chest which kind of collects together all of the random bits and pieces of expansion bits and stuff that Portal have released over the years cards and just loads of little mini bits and pieces and stuff and characters and things you can play with it. Robinson Crusoe um well look let's watch the video I did because I did a video me unboxing and talking about it which is here. Oh, Oh, this is the Robinson Crusoe a treasure chest. I did see they were selling it. Um, so, uh, Robinson Crusoe, by the way, if you've not played Robinson Crusoe, um, it's, oh God, it's a bastard. Uh, I have it over there. I've got the original, there was Z-Man edition of it. Z-Man, Z-Man. Um, so, uh, which was marred by a terrible rule book. Which Paul, to be fair to Paul, has sorted out since. But the idea of Robson Crusoe is you are essentially Robson Crusoe. You're trapped on an island. Um, Friday can turn up. The island, if you know the basics of the Crusoe story, you're, uh, the basic scenario is you're trying to survive on the island and, and get rescued. Um, and it's, uh, if you've seen anything like Castaway, any of that sort of stuff, it, it's a brilliant simulator of misery and hell. Uh, <laughs> it's just a shit of a game. 
Um, I think I refer to it as a complete and utter bastard. Um, and I think Nazi at one point actually did publish that as being my review of the game. Um, so this is the Switch chest. This was, I, I did see it was on there. Um, it's got more stuff in it. I think a lot of this is like components and stuff, like bling upgrades to the Crusoe commands, of which I think I already own a lot of that because I picked it all up from a expo a while ago when he was actually over at it. The first one in uh, Portal Games Showdown. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, that's a big book. Uh, this is a set of every promo release thus far. Yeah, so this is pretty much all the promos. So I got some of this stuff. So I might be able to do something else with this. Um, there's Henry Stanley. So that was the Beagle, I think it was. There's... I don't remember what that is. Some other stuff there. Maybe the book goes through exactly what's in there. I think this is all nice. Okay. Um, Lords or Lloyd. Maybe it will tell us what we've got in here. Uh, oh my goodness. Discover loads of discovery. There's loads of stuff in here. I'm not entirely sure how much of this will work with my old first edition version um, of the game. Uh, uh, because well I don't know um, so yeah we've got counters we've got baggy we've got uh, these are kind of cool we've got the little fishy meeples um, and I don't know what they are no, no, it looks like a crab I don't know what that is was that a guano on a tree what the bloody hell is that oh it's a knife <laughs> uh, cool uh, so there's a lot of stuff in here there's an awful lot of stuff there's a uh, there's loads of chits and counters. There's loads of cards. There's more stuff for your deck. There's stickers for there. There's new characters. Um, the gamer, I think, is in there. There's um, there's stickers to put on, on the tokens for the new characters that are in the game. Uh, and then there's um, Adventure to Neverland, cool. Treasure Island Junior. That was kind of a, a junior version that they did as print and play. Poachers, I don't remember. Time travel, cool. Tracy Dr. Liverstone. There's, so there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, well, that was an unexpected surprise. Uh, now, for my money, uh, Robinson Crusoe is one of uh, Paul Games' greatest efforts. I think it's really one of his strongest solid designs, uh, in my opinion. I'm going to put back up there. Um, cool. Thank you, Inarsi. That's very nice. Um, so that was Robinson Crusoe, uh, the Tracy Chess from Paul Games. Uh, Robinson Crusoe is great vicious bastard of a game um i do like it i've got mystery tales that's still playing and i will we'll kind of fold this into it um but yeah it is one of portal's cracking releases it, it was as i said in that bit you've just seen it was marred by a, a abysmal rule book when it first came out however it is now quite playable there's been a second edition of it it is good it's worth the time investment um it plays well as a solo game um but it's also a great group think um let's sit around the uh, desert island board game and see how quickly we will die uh what else this came oh this came in the post for me the other day um tremors i did a special edition from arrow video we've i've gone about Arrow video before how i do like a bit of Arrow video they do put out some really great versions of cult classic movies tremors is for me is one of the great 90s monster movies it's one of probably stands on its own um there's been very few of them uh it is great it, it's kind of timeless it works really well the special effects are fantastic really great cast fantastic script really good music uh, just the whole thing, the whole package is really well. Bombed on its initial release, even though it got some good ratings, um, reviews, reviewers and stuff. Just didn't find its fingers. And as always with these kind of cult classic great stuff, it found its home on home video. Um, it's Kevin Bacon in it, Fred Ward. Great. There's a bunch of other sort of character actors. Michael Goss made a career off the back of, the, I think there's like six Tremor sequels. For the record, I've not watched all the sequels. Um, they were kind of law of diminishing returns, in my opinion. The class, the first, the original, is just a, a absolute cracking, perfect, boom, does what it needs to do, and, and it works so brilliantly and well. Sequels are all right, but I've never really trailed through them all because they kind of cheaper and less budgety and they, they, they don't quite have the charm of that original movie um comes from universal we did jaws there's a lot of similarities between this and jaws actually i mean we sat and watched this again the other day um some of the music cues are definitely jawsy and you've got the whole idea of the monster 
beneath you coming to get you. Um, uh, there's a couple of scenes that even call back to that. Um, and I think even the production designer, when they were designing making the movie, you know, they had to get around the fact that the monsters couldn't be seen all the time. So there's lots of tricks and cheats that Jaws implemented. Um, and there's even the scene I saw with Michael Goff uh, with a gun who's kind of proudly on the front of the uh, of a tractor later on, kind of reminiscent of Quint. Uh, on the front of the orca when they're hunting the shark. It's a great movie. If you've never seen Dreamers, I'm, I'm astounded if you've never seen it. Um, it is a throwback to 1950s monster movies. As I say, brilliant written, brilliantly put together. Fantastic special effects that hold up still really well today. It's a funny, with horror elements in it. Um, great cult movie. Um, and yeah, I, I can't believe any of you not seen it. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, then you know picking up the Arrow edition of it is... It's always worth a call because there's lots of nice stuff in there. Uh, so there we go, that's it. Um, really to fold out this one, as there is nothing else to speak about, I was going to quickly go through my um, 10, 10 of my favourite Christmas movies, alternative Christmas movies, I would say to a point. I'm not one for Christmas, really. Um, uh, 15 years I worked at Meet in a toy shop, Toys R Us, and it was hell on earth. Um, and uh, anyone that says differently would be obviously clearly losing their mind. It was shit. It was hell. It was horrific. It was kind of like a bit of Stockholm Syndrome as we kind of worked through season after season. Long hours. Horrendous. It basically killed any Christmas spirit I had. I hated Christmas. I hated it. Uh, because it just meant there was this period of um, two to three months where it was just hell for me. Uh, I kind of subsequently left, past, left that behind me. I'm, I'm kind of finally coming around to in, uh, seeing some of the joy in Christmas to a point. <laughs> However, getting me through those Christmas times was my Christmas movie collection um, uh, and alternative types. This is not definitive of all of it. Some of this is obvious that's going to be on here. There's a few things that have sat on the sidelines that it's kind of a fight to get them in there. I'd, I'd quite like to see, and there is more I'd watch. But this is some, definitely 10 um, Christmas alternative type movies that are worth a watch i think in my opinion <coughs> so that's uh let's dive into that um so there we go number 10 we will throw in krampus uh for michael doherty director he did trick or treat as well um kind of similar levels to the gremlins and this is kind of this and gremlins kind of shuffle in and out of my thing because gremlins is a great christmas monster movie um krampus is a bit darker um, much more horror overtones on it. It is only a 15 and it isn't, I mean, personally myself, I'm quite jaded in the horrors, but Christmas juxtaposed with horror is kind of a thing that works for me. Uh, this looks gorgeous. It's all, it's kind of got a lot of subtle stuff going on there about the consumerism at Christmas. Um, and um, a great cast, Tony Collette, who kind of has appeared in a load of horror movies like Hereditary and other stuff. Um, she's pops up in this other comedy actors in there as well it's a good dark twisted tale of christmas it looks very christmasy lots of snow and things and all this krampus all the practical special effects in there i think wetter were involved in some of it um looks brilliant gorgeous good fun it's a dark comedy with the christmas spirit kind of eking in in there um that's always one what i kind of throw on the disc at some point because because i've got issues um then next up we've got trancers charles band from the 80s 80s classic uh cheap straight to video if you were a child in the 80s there's no doubt you would have seen trousers on the shelf with um with the tagline i think jack Def's back even though he's never been here before this kind of throws everything as a classic 80s low budget movie it always did it throws everything into the pot we've got cyberpunk we've got blade runner in there we've got time travel we've got zombies um 1980s uh, la i think it is we've got tim thomason's jack Def. this sort of a uh, kind of your noirist type sort of cop sent back from time to stop his nemesis the whistler who is turning people into these kind of minor zombie things helen hunt turns up in this looking cute as a button may i say in her 80s thing um there's a love interest we've got zombies we've got, we've got a zombie santa in here um uh, it doesn't overdo the christmas thing but it's all in there the thing it's cheap it's really quick movie about an hour and 20 minutes if, if that um and it just does hang around gets on with it yes it's cheap yes it's sleazy yes it's great it's everything we like i like, trances if you've never seen trances is well worth hunting down and having a look at because it, it is a cult classic curio there was a bunch of sequels to it um which i've never bothered to watch because you know sequels are usually cheaper and awful and this kind of was cheap and awful to begin with um but yes trances great stuff um the next up really we're throwing it's got to be in there really shane black the man who invented 
Christmas and guns, really. Um, he's a man who has made many Christmas-themed action and violent movies. Love a bit of Shane Black. Lethal Weapon um, stands as a classic. Lethal Weapon 2 is actually probably even edges out because it's got that Christmas in it and it's got the added additional of the South Africans as bad guys, which just, oh, when that first came out, it was amazing. The first two Lethal Weapons were amazing. Um, the first one is definitely the more Christmas-themed one, um, and it's a good, solid movie. Love them. Love them, and dearly. You could watch them on an eternal loop, especially this time of year. Who doesn't want a bit of Mel Gibson, a bit of Christmas, and a bit of wanton ultraviolence? Great stuff. Um, following on the table of that, it has to be really, is Die Hard. Uh, Die Hard 2 kind of pushes in there as well as a very good Christmas movie, but um, Die Hard is, is the thing. Let's go aside, is Die Hard was named actually by um, Shane Black. Uh, he came up with the title. The title was actually Die Hard was originally going to be attached to his other movie, um, which was uh, The Last Boy Scout, which is a great Christmas Bruce Willis-y action violent movie again. Uh, <laughs> there's a theme here. Um, but yes, Die Hard was the title he had originally for that. It got taken from that. Or he, he offered it up. Um, and along, along with the Christmas theming of the original Die Hard, it was taken because of Lethal Weapon. Aha. But yes, Die Hard is a classic, as we all know. Um, it's not Christmas at all. Hans Gruber drops off in the Nakatomi Tower. Every year I will watch that. The kids enjoy it. I love it. It's a cracky movie. Die Hard, just faultless, brilliant, cracking action movie. We all know that anyway, don't we? Uh, next up, we will throw in there is Trading Places. Uh, I watched this movie on a perpetual repeat in, in probably in the 80s, late 80s, 90s, um, we had a Betamax video recorder recorded off TV. And at the time, you didn't have much movies to watch. I watched that video to death. This is a great kind of Christmas theme movie. You've got Dan Aykroyd, you've got Eddie Murphy, both of them really on the top of the game. Jamie Lee Curtis turns up in this. Um, you've got Don Amici and, oh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Don Ralph Bellamy. Um, so essentially playing the Duke Brothers. They're kind of Scrooges and they make a really shitty bet to see if they can essentially take Murphy, who's a down and out um, sort of beggar at the start of the movie, um, and Ackroyd, who is a commodities broker, uh, and switch them, see if they can survive and what will happen. They basically throw them into the different environments. Uh, really great. Daniel Mayer, it turns up in this as well. Um, it, Great comedy, really funny, some rude moments, it's great, it's John Landis, um, it is funny, and I mean, to be fair, it gets quite deep into the stock market stuff, uh, but yes, a great 80s comedy, um, it is, it's, that's great, this is just a great 80s comedy, but there we are, Trading Places, if you've never seen that one, it's always worth a watch. Um, then one for the kiddies, <laughs> um, Batman Returns, uh, probably for me actually the best of the two Tim Burton movies, though Batman's great with Nicholson's um, Joker, but this captures that Gotham at winter feel to it. Um, you've got uh, just everything going on in here. It, it looks set and production design, again, is faultless and amazing and cool and twisted and weird. Um, it kind of didn't do very well at the box office because it was kind of fucked up, really. As a, as a, essentially, there was like Happy Meals prepared and all this sort of stuff. And it's really not a kiddie movie. Really, it's kind of dark. It's fucked up. It's twisted. Um, Tim Burton and full Tim Burton really love the aesthetic of it. The later Batman movies have been more towards probably actual proper Batman, but as a Christmassy themed superhero type thing, yeah, Batman Returns, great, and Christopher Walken in it. What more do you need? Um, going back to Mr. Shane Black, of course, we got the Long Kiss Goodnight, uh, Gene Davis, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, very Christmassy, lots of violent Christmas violence in here. Um, it's uh, directed by Rennie Harlan, I think I remember rightly. It's overblown, it's ridiculous. Um, Gina Davis essentially, it's kind of uh, taken that whole idea of an, a, a trained killer assassin who's lost their memory um, and then kind of being reawakened, which is what D Gina Davis does in this. Brilliant, what a cracking movie. It's just got everything going on there. Um, and and, uh, and it's got this cold sort of feel to it. It's got some great Christmas standout action moments in there. Samuel L. Jackson is Bang on on this. He's fantastic in this. Uh, great villains. Um, just all the good stuff. Oh, lots of the good, violent Christmas feels. Well worth a look. Um, then we have uh, Terry Gilliam. Um, he's done a few Christmassy feed things, and I think the Fisher King and even 12 Monkeys to a point. But I'm going to go for Brazil because this is definitely the most Christmassy one of his movies. <laughs> Uh, this is a dark movie. <laughs> um, I love 
Brazil. It's gorgeous to look at. Production design is fantastic. The whole idea of Sam Lowry, um, who's this bureaucrat in this 1984-ish England, um, who's kind of has these flights of fantasy set around Christmas. It's got some great moments. Um, De Niro turns up for this as well, actually. Uh, but even the beginning, we've got the sleigh bells tinkling as the family are kind of thrown into the street and the husband is taken. It's just takes that 1994 bureaucracy and kind of really goes to town on it. Um, and it is, it's just twisted and great and weird and, and wonderful, um, bleak. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's funny, um, funny. And then sometimes you're like, oh God, that's not funny. Um, but Brazil, if you've never seen Brazil for Terry Julian, um, you like that cyberpunky vibe, that sort of kind of neo-gothic sort of, sci-fi future and, and and what Orwell's 1984 was doing a lot of that is all kind of going on in here with um some great comedy chops being run um, Jim Broadbent turns up in here Michael Palin uh and loads of people loads and loads of people very good um love that one Brazil Terry Gilliam um then we've got another favorite of mine is in Bruges um which uh, is just brilliant Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, um, and Ray Fiennes, all three of them are just on top of their game. Uh, it was by Martin McDonough, I think it was his name. I can say it's Martin McDonough. Oh, there's a bit of fruit scrubbing against the table. Dropped it in my lap. It's all gone wrong. Yeah, it's Martin McDonough. Um, he did a bunch of other movies. Uh, three billboards and... Uh, and seven Psychos or something. This is his best movie. It was his first one. Um... Essentially, Gleason and Farrell are hitmen. They've been dispatched to Bruges um, because of Farrell has done a terrible thing, and it's all about him dealing with his repercussions of, of their terrible lives and what they, the, the violence and wanton horribleness they, they've caused. And it starts showing Bruges as this kind of Christmassy thing. Gleason just wants to walk around and sightsee, um, and it slowly, as the course of the movie goes on, it becomes this dark, twisted, macabre fairy tale um ray finds a wonderful vile form spouting some of the worst worst dialogue possible to people he shouldn't be spouting it to um violent again dark um but with kind of that uplifting christmas message at the end even despite all of the shit that goes down um and just a really really fucking good movie um in bruges if you've never seen it highly recommended uh, and then finally for me personally always gets a Christmas airing for me, always comes out, is Bad Santa. Um, this was kind of a documentary for me when I was working at Toys R Us. <laughs> this wasn't comedy. This was real. Um, I was on the, I was dangerously close to becoming Bad Santa more than once. Um, Billy Bob Thornton, fantastic in this. Uh, great script. The Coen Brothers were kind of tinkled involved in this as well. It's, uh, it's rude, it is obnoxious. It kind of started this whole thing for bad this and bad that movies, but this was the original um, and did it very well. It's very funny. It's a popular dry, sardonic sort of humour in there. Um, when I first watched it, I, I enjoyed it, but kind of was like, what if I just watched? And watched it again. It's one of those that grows in you and becomes funny every time I watch it. What I also adore about this movie, despite it, it's ill-tempered, vile behavior throughout this it still manages to swing around to give you that feel-good christmas ending to the movie despite all the horrible shit that goes on in this um has again another nod towards consumerism and, and how christmas is maybe not what it was all about um but just well worth it for that partnership between thornton um and uh oh what's his name tony k tony k i want to say it is but, 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 but. tony cox has his uh Short little partner and an elf uh, and the kid. The kid, just incredible. Um, yes, so there you go, Bad Santa. Wonderful, every Christmas. In fact, I need to watch it so far. I haven't watched that yet this year. So there is 10 of the alternative Christmas movies that I quite enjoy. Stuff like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang nearly made that list. Um, nice Guys is quite good, as I said. I've mentioned some other stuff in there. Even My Man Free, you could potentially throw into that mix. For those are the ones that I most kind of go to at the moment. Um, I'm sure there's hopefully some more Christmassy themed mayhem on the way from people. Um, Shane Black said he's not doing any more of them, but we'll see. Um, but yes, there we go. So that's it. We are on the doorstep of near Christmas. I've got some movies to watch now to entertain myself. Um, uh, hopefully there might be some news and some stuff, things to speak about next week. Who knows? Um, but there we go. This has been Who Does Rolls. I've been Mike B. That has 
been pretty much nothing relating to board games at all in this episode. I will reopen this box. Take that as you will. Have fun. Uh, see you soon. Uh, yeah, and stuff. And there's other videos coming. I think the top 50 part one will be dropping in the next week, day or so. Hopefully, if I can finish editing it. Oh my goodness. Ta da! Farewell. Have a good time. I will catch up before the big day, I am certain. Um, thanks for tuning in and stay safe out there. Bye.